I want to continue now with a, a second problem. This is problem 231, and I'll read it, and here's the associated figure with it. Um, one of the weird things about this book is they use different numbers for the figures than for the problems. Someone on Amazon complained about this, but that's life. Okay. So it says two equal masses, M, are attached to a third mass, 2M, by equal lengths of fine thread, and the thread is passed over two small pulleys, here and here, with negligible friction situated 100 centimeters apart, as shown in figure 229. The mass 2M is initially held level with the pulleys midway between them and then released from rest. When it has a descended a distance of 50 centimeters, it strikes a tabletop. What is the speed V when it reaches the tabletop? Okay. So this is one of your usual simple questions. You can do it by forces and everything, but again, there's usually an easier way to do this. And the thing I would emphasize here is, first of all, realize that this 2M weight down, that's the force going down. You might think, well, the force is going, you know, this thing should be balanced. But obviously the vertical component of the force on here is much less than 2M. So this is going to fall, and it's going to fall forever until these things reach the top here. So when it hits this point, it will be going at a certain speed V. These things will both go up by an equal amount, and they'll be going at a certain speed V prime. I'll put this going down V, up V prime. Okay. So initially, let me just start again. Initially, all the masses are at rest, and we'll measure the potential energy from where they start. So the initial energy is equal to zero. And this is going to be equal to the final energy because energy is conserved in here. There's no friction in everything. We have conservative gravitational forces. And the final energy is just going to be equal to one-half. Kinetic energy formula is one-half mv squared. The mass in the middle is 2m, so one-half 2m times v squared plus one-half times m times v prime squared. This is each of the ones on the side, but there's two of them, times two. Now the potential energy, when we get to the sequence where it hits the block, we're going to have minus 2m, because that's the big mass, g, the f formula for potential energy is mgh, 2m. It falls 50 centimeters. And now, also we have to subtract minus, I'm going to have 2 because there's two masses. The ones, hmm, the ones on the side, it should be at plus because they're going up, plus 2m times g. Now the question is how much do they go up? Well, if this one goes down 50 centimeters, then question, it's just a geometric question, how much does this go up? And you can see that it's going to be, this thing over here is the square root of 2 times 50 centimeters. And um, so it's going to be 2mg times the square root of 2 minus 1 times 50 centimeters. So now the real question is how does this velocity v prime compare to v? And that's what I'm going to show right now. Let's just draw a triangle. Let's call this y. Let's 
call this Y prime. This is 50 centimeters is fixed. So the velocity V is, that that's falling down is dy dt. V prime is how much this is going up. It's just the amount that this is increasing in length. So that's equal to dy prime dt. And now we use geometry. We know that 50 cm squared is equal to sorry, plus y squared is equal to y prime squared. Taking the derivative of this differentials, we just get 2y dy equal 2y prime dy prime. So dy prime is equal to dy times y over y prime. And at the point where we hit the table, y over y prime is just 1 over the square root of 2. That's dy over the square root of 2. So this means that v prime is equal to v over the square root of 2. That's the relationship we wanted. When this is falling down this much, how much is this going up? It's a little bit less because the extra goes this way. Okay, so we established that v prime is v over the square root of 2. I just want to clarify this thing over here. This is when the, uh, the block hits the table. It was 50 centimeters that we were taking here, and now we're taking the square root of 2 times 50 centimeters. So we subtract that. That's how much extra thread had to be pulled upward. That's how much it rises. So we have this relationship. Now we can substitute it into our energy thing. Basically, 0 equals um, mv squared, and this is going to be, this cancels with that, but then we're going to get another 2 from this relationship. So we're going to get plus mv squared over 2, and we have minus 2mg times 50 centimeters. Both of them have that factor. And then here I have a minus, and then I have, so I have the square root of 2, minus 2. Okay, so we get, from this equation we get 3 halves mv squared is equal to 2mg times 50 centimeters times 2 minus the square root of 2. Cancel the m's. So v squared equals 2 thirds times 2 times g times 50 centimeters times 2 minus the square root of 2. G is 981 centimeters per second squared. Substituting in there, taking the square root, we get V equals 195.73 centimeters per second. Okay, not a difficult problem, just a little bit easier. Again, it's geometry mostly, and always in these problems I always suggest you start with conservation of energy, or conservation of momentum, or principle of virtual work, or something. Try and avoid using F equal MA. These, these problems aren't that, they can be solved that way, but they're not all that suited to that. And in the next video, I'll come back and I'll continue with um, some harder problems. Thank you.